Karen, when I first heard the term the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics, Vigna's uh, famous expression, um, it, it elicited in me a sense that there's a deep connection between physics and mathematics, which on one hand sounds so superficially obvious when you know calculus and stuff, on, and on the other hand, it's a, a shocking concept that that's the way the world exists. Uh, so as a mathematician who has dealt on both sides of this equation, uh, what are your feelings about this unreasonable effectiveness? Well, put it that way, uh, it seems to me that uh, every discipline needs a language and that mathematics provides this language for more than physics now that uh, nowadays mathematics is used as a language in many, many, many areas of science, not just physics. So I don't think it's at all surprising that mathematics should uh, be effective because it, it's the language that uh, it's in. But uh, the question might be why physicists don't develop their own language and, and why should they need other people, those other people like <laughs> called mathematicians, <laughs> to actually teach them anything? Mm -hmm. And that might, be, that might be sort of my feeling about what the question mm -hmm. really is, is. Well, I mean, let's just start. When you say mathematics and language, sure, but when we, we use the term language in, uh, in our, in, in, uh, literally about, about our, our language, the language is an approximation of uh, a way of communicating what we think, but isn't it not the case in mathematics and physics that the tie is much deeper than that? Because I, we, we're talking in English, we could have talked, be speaking in, in, in German or Dutch or Chinese or whatever, It'd be yes. different languages, but we'd be communicating the same ideas. But yes. in physics and math, there seems to be a much deeper connection. Well, mathematics is not really tied to uh, linguistics. I mean, I also do, would like to also say that mathematics is not just language. It does consist of uh, concepts that are developed in themselves, abstract concepts, mm -hmm. con concepts that are developed in themselves and so forth. I mean, I always, I always have a lot of trouble describing to people what mathematics really is like. And the only thing that I can really come close to is saying, well, you know, what is the concept behind a symphony, for mm -hmm. example? I mean, what, what is it that's being described or being uh, told? Or, certainly there's language involved, but there's something underlying, some structure. And um, this is the only way I can ever uh, manage to describe to someone who's not in, in a science what mathematics might be like for somebody doing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, so the analogy the, with the symphony, symphony has uh, different instruments, different notes, and all those things by themselves are studyable, analyzable, but it's, it's, when you put them together, there's something different to create the, the magical whole of uh, Mahler's Fifth or oh, yeah. uh, Brahms' First Symphony. Or Beethoven's Late String Quartets, right, to right. name my favorite. Okay, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> right, and it, it's, very, it's very, you can analyze them and you can discuss them and you can write I'm sure, I don't know how many PhD theses mm -hmm. have been written on mm -hmm. these things, but it is a little bit hard to say exactly what it is. And uh, mathematics is, uh, it, it has concepts and uh, ideas and uh, geometry and uh, algebra and all made up, uh, it's all made up of these things, but there's, there's something there that's conceptual, mm. that's very hard to get. And that's, of course, I think what people fall in love with, mm. that, that, that structure, that, that conceptual part. When we talk about the, uh, the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the world, that's mathematics to physics, but there's been work really throughout the history of mathematics, but more so that people seem startled about, that physics can actually help at certain points um, uh, 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 kind of open up new areas of mathematics that even pure mathematicians didn't think about. I mean, Newton invented ca calculus or discovered calculus because he needed something, but more recent times, some of the deep theories, uh, and you've been involved in, in, uh, in, in 
in uh, seeing how deep physical theories actually can turn on new areas of mathematics? Well, but Newton is a great example. I mean, Newton was interested in, in uh, gravi the behavior of gravity and uh, how stars move and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a typical example of mathematics that's developed uh, as a result of experiential ex of experience from the outside world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that and mathematics gets very far from that. It gets very dry. Uh, the the ma mathematics, uh, and in fact, I, I should say, uh, it sometimes uh, the mathematics uh, uh, grows from uh, disciplines within mathematics affecting each other too, but it's a question of needing outside uh, in, uh, outside concepts and outside impetus and outside pressure to actually move around, which seems to move mathematics. And I see. I think Newton is a typical is a great example of a case where mathematics was influenced by physics. Sure. I, I know a lot of pure mathematicians who would be very upset at this conversation. They wouldn't like that. They wouldn't like to think that pure mathematics is, is uh, the, the, the stepchild or the handmaiden of, uh, of physics or anything in the Well, it's world. not a handmaiden, but it, it doesn't exist. I mean, it's, a crea it's, it's something in our brains and it comes from somewhere. And it doesn't, it's not completely mm. independent of physical uh, experience at all. Mm. I mean, it, it's a little bit off topic, but I want to say, you know, I broke my hip. I was on crutches and off my feet for three months, and I couldn't do any math during this time. Oh. It was only when I started to be able to move around. But that's very interesting. And actually. so I, I just, I think that I, I don't, I, I don't think of math as being so so uh, independent of the rest of the world. Well, so, so how do you analyze your own uh, your own inca capability of doing math when you physically were not walking? Well, I don't know. In my case, uh, the, there there's things going on in my brain that are not just plain language, mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're spatial, and uh, they're, um, I, I have some sort of imagination going on, and I mm -hmm. needed to be able to <laughs> move around in order to exercise this. Well, now, of course, Look at somebody like Stephen Hawking, and I really just want, I mean, I just say, well, there are clearly people who aren't like me at all. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's, a, that's a very telling uh, uh, analysis of the neuroscience of uh, mathematics in, in your case. That's uh, very interesting. <laughs>